Ugh. I recently did a video talking about this guy, the Matrix card. The super limited, there's only a thousand of them made, paying homage to the retro designs or whatever, Matrix 5090 for the Ultra Steel $4,000. Anyway, one of the main comments I kept seeing was, one, why didn't you benchmark the Astral? Planned on it, never got around to it, to be honest. And then two, why didn't you try and take the Matrix BIOS and put it on the Astral and see what would happen? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so first things first, this is a do not do. I, I came up with a saying and actually it kind of stuck for a little bit. That was actually kind of clever, which is rare. It's rare that I have clever sayings. It was, if it works, good for you. If it breaks, it's on you. Okay, so that's what we're going with here today. I'm not gonna be posting the Matrix BIOS, I'm sure. Tech Power Up probably already has it somewhere, I don't know, but but I will not be posting it online. Same thing with the XOC BIOS, I was not willing to post any of that stuff because I want I'm okay with teaching you how to cause harm. I'm just not okay with handing you the tools, okay? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's why I'm not posting any of the BIOS. You can find them. The, the clever out there can find them if you want them. So first things we have to do, first things first is I have to extract the BIOS off of this. Now this is pretty simple. To do that, you just need GPU-Z. GPU-Z has a little button in the corner. It's a little square with an arrow and you click on that and basically it means save BIOS locally. And when you click on that, it'll ask, it'll say you have to shut down the driver for a minute. Do you want to continue? You say yes. I'll demonstrate that for you here quickly. Now this is my XOC rig right here. So the text is gonna be kind of hard to see. It's very thin. This is a very custom Windows install uh, to help boost scores as high as possible. So a lot of the text might be hard to see, but anyway, GPU-Z. So yes. And you can see right here, here is video controller VGA. Oh, it's still installing the BIOS or the, the driver. There it is. Cause I switched cards. It has to reestablish the driver for that card. There we go. So I should have audio now, right? Yeah, okay. Open up Tech Power Up. Now it can properly identify the card as a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090, Subvendors Asus. And then here's a co the cool thing about this. This, has a, this actually does have a higher boost clock too. Not crazy, but it's a boost clock of 2730. It goes much higher than that out of the box. It actually goes up to about 2900 or so. Um, check this out. If I click the little square right here, it says save BIOS. Then you just say save to file. And I've saved it right here as matrix right there. Okay. The other tool you're going to need is NV flash, a uh, 64 bit version of that. So you can find that on tech power up site. There's also this button right here. If you happen to have the card and you want to know like, Jay, how can I submit it? If you want to, you click this button and you can say submit to online database. So then it will just take it and send it up. So that's on you if you want to do that. I won't be doing that today. So I've already saved the BIOS. That's all I needed from this card right here. Uh, again, just to compare the um, the boost clocks and stuff, right? So 2730 is where this one goes up to. And yes, we do have all ROPs. That's kind of nice to see. It's, I would be surprised if anything still made it through this day without the right ROPs. So that's it. We've extracted the BIOS. I'm assuming all of you have a bunch of 5090s laying around, you know, that you can just swap around. Jensen said it best. Aren't you all just sitting there on your $10,000 computers? For $15.99, you bring it home to your $10,000 PC Entertainment Command Center. Isn't that right? Don't tell me that's not true. Don't be ashamed. You all say I've lost touch. Okay, so now assuming that you've all gone to your wall of GPUs and grabbed your favorite Astral. Don't be ashamed. Dude, look, obviously I'm being satirical right now, especially with the comments on the uh, Matrix video. We look at stuff around here. We look at the cheap sh We look at the expensive sh and everything in between. It's up to you as a viewer to decide, you know, this is about the cutoff of anything beyond there I'm not interested in. I put it up there, you decide if you wanna watch it. It's not my job to curate the content for you specifically. It's your job to curate it for yourself. 2026, we still have to educate people how to consume content. All right, rant over. Those that use both sides of their brain will understand where I'm coming from. So we can see now, look at that. Boost clock on the Astral is 2580. So there's already a megahertz advantage to the stock BIOS, but none of that matters because Afterburner exists, GPU tweak exists. That, that difference can be made up by moving some sliders. Um, but anyway, so you also should save the BIOS you're planning on overriding. 
Okay, I've already done that. That's why I have this, this folder here of all these different BIOS and stuff that I've been using. So here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to go ahead and flash. I'm gonna flash the different BIOS. So you can switch the BIOS slider, by the way, while it's wired on. So quick fun fact, it only reads from the EEPROM while it's booting. Once it's booted, that's it. You can switch the slider and nothing bad will happen. But if we flash, it'll flash to whatever EEPROM is physically connected. So since I moved the slider right now, it's gonna actually flash to the other BIOS. But I just decided I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna leave this on the P BIOS right now. So you can move it back and forth with it booted. And then if I was to say, okay, this is, let's say for instance, you bork your second BIOS, okay? You can, most BIOS or high-end boards these days have dual BIOS. So you can boot into the good BIOS, and then after it's booted, switch it over to the Borked BIOS and then reflash. You can do that, it works just fine. But here's what we're gonna do now. We are gonna go ahead and flash our matrix and let's do NV flash 64-6. Six says if there is a sub ID mismatch, overwrite. Now, this is the, the ID is gonna look the same with the exception of the last two numbers. Uh, and I'll show you that right now. So it's matrix.rom. It turns off the driver for a moment, comes back. Okay, it says firmware P image PCIe subsystem 1043.8A61 does not match adapter 1043.A9E3. Are you sure you wanna override? Say yes. Anyway, yes. You'll see the penis grow. Done. Firmware successful. Reading EEPROM, this may take up to 30 seconds. Now it's done. And now we can go, and now you'll notice your driver F, or like frames per second, or excuse me, your, your video frames per second is gonna be locked at 60. It's not recognizing itself as a 3D adapter anymore. See how everything's just grayed out? It's because we have to restart. So this is now essentially flashed as a 5090 astral matrix. But you're gonna see, we've already tested this. It actually doesn't work. Let me show you what happens. You're not gonna, so we have no sound, right? If I look at MSI Afterburner, we also do not have an adapter showing up. So essentially this is only showing up right now by using basic VGA adapter. So every graphics card without a driver is just a basic VGA adapter. Right now it just installed the driver, right? Because we've seen this a million times where when you first, like it thought it was a new graphics card right now. So it just went, okay, let me reinstall it. Let me just re reload the driver. Well, we still have no sound. And if I go to Afterburner, it still just shows as a generic VGA. Now, if I load up Tech Power Up GPU Z, it shows it's a 5090. It shows it's an Asus, but then everything else about it is unknown. They're all unknowns. So it's like it partially works, but then doesn't. So it, it actually, like it, it works in the sense that the card isn't bricked in that like you get no video out of it, but it doesn't work in the sense that it doesn't actually enable any of the 3D mode stuff. So this, I'm assuming because they're both Asus product, there's actually some, it's got some checksum in there that's basically saying, uh, good. you tried, but we're not gonna let you do that. That's probably for good measure, to be honest, pulling 800 watts through this cable is not a good idea. Obviously we did it for our benchmarks, but that's because for one minute runs at a time, short periods of time, even though it's dozens of runs, uh, it's fine. It's long sustained use under gaming conditions at 800 watts. I would be super worried about that cable. Um, but yeah, it, so it clearly does not work. Uh, I've spent some time off camera trying to make that work. Now let me show you what you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and flash this back real quick to the stock BIOS, so NV flash. 64-6 again, because currently it thinks it's a matrix subset or sub ID. So now we have to make it an astral again. So the dash six, and then I have, oh, uh, is it 5090 astral stock three dot ROM. We'll flash that back. Don't forget, there is another BIOS out there. Doesn't have to be a matrix BIOS. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this ROM over and I'm gonna go ahead and restart the graphics card because what I've already done on the other BIOS switch is I've installed the XOC BIOS, the one that doesn't exist. 
And I think everyone's kind of figured out it's there now and people have posted it because the number 100 score on Port Royal is in the 45,000s at a 3300 and some odd megahertz frequency. All of those cards from 100 and above have to be running the custom BIOS because they almost all say ASUS. So clearly that XOC BIOS has leaked out. It didn't come from me. And I think they've even had new versions since I stopped doing the XOC stuff. So I have now loaded that. You'll notice <laughs> my slider can go up to 160, but we learned with this BIOS, this is actually Watts. So 100 is a thousand. 110 would be 1100. 160 is 1600 watt. We're gonna set it to 60 because that's stock. Okay, so we're gonna do that real quick. That's why it was idling at such a high temperature already. Plus, because the fans are off, there's also that. We'll go ahead and use Heaven because it is the best way to trigger Steve, even though he's not watching. Let's just make sure it doesn't crash here real quick. Cool, that's all I wanted to do right there. I'm not using my PMD on this because it pulls too much power for the PMD to be able to use it. But what I have done here, you can see right here, I've already highlighted in yellow, the GPU 12 volt high power. It calls it 12 volt high power, although it's two by six now. So this is what software reported wattage is. It's actually gonna be a little higher than that because we know the physical draw is different than what the software is reporting. Um, and because of efficiency losses for the graphics card to get the 600 watts it's demanding, it pulls more like 610 to 615 on average through the cable, the total power. But now check this out. But I mean, we're at stock power right now, right? So it's a 582, nothing crazy right there, but check this out. Without touching any sliders, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and max out the voltage curve. There we go. Without touching any sliders, it is pulling 583 watts, which is, watts, which is stock. I'm not even gonna touch the core clock. And remember how it showed, what, 25 something megahertz? It's up to 29 GPU boost in effect. I feel like I need to do a video again explaining this. So many people keep asking me, why is my card overclocking? I wanna stop it from overclocking. It's like, it's designed to do that. It's stock, it's supposed to do that. Anyway, I digress. What if I make this seven, let's go 65, boom. Now we're pulling over 600. So it's 618, 625, 630, 631. Now let's go ahead and push the RAM to 2000, bam. So 634 watts right there. In heaven, by the way, heaven is not a hard test to run. Now what if I go 70, which is 700 watts, pulling 672. You know why it's not really going up? Because we've hit the max boost logic for GPU boost. So now what if I add some core clock? Um, yeah, do that, boom. Now it's at 3187 megahertz, 3200 megahertz, and now look at the power, right? See, it's starting to pull more. So what if I go ahead and make it a matrix card at 80, that's 800 watts, boom. There it is, it's 772 watts. Remember, that's the max power, 800 watts. So it's not gonna necessarily go to that. Now you'll see our pin amps are not happy. They're all close to each other, which is nice. I had to replace the cable. My other one was getting worn out. So we had huge variance across the pins. But look at that. We've now essentially created a matrix. But look at the temperatures. It's at 65C right now at 800 watts. Even without liquid metal, which the matrix has, this card is doing pretty damn good. But it's got Kingpin KPX in it because I've repasted this a bunch of times. But look at that. So let's go now to 900 watts. Jumps right up to over 820, 850, 865, 875, 880, 882, 884. We are pulling almost 14 amps on a few of the wires. You should see the look on Nick's face. He's afraid it's gonna basically explode. It might. We're still at 74C, that's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. At almost 1,000 watts. Just for good measure, let's go ahead and make it 1,000 watts. Look at the temp, look at the jump in temp. Instantly it goes up. We are pulling almost 15, we are pulling over 15 amps on two of the cables. 980, and there it goes. It just thermally shut down basically right there because the hot spot probably went way too high. Anyway, that is how you can basically very quickly, and see the cable's fine. See, that was not a cable problem. That was just, <sighs> core clock and temperature are directly relational, so, what I started to say, what I said actually in a different video was that you can have the same frequency 
be stable at a lower temperature than a higher temperature. So right there, I didn't increase the clock speed, but I increased the power. And it was like, fine, I'll just go ahead and continue to increase the power draw, even though the frequency wasn't going up. As the temp went up, the stability went down. None of this should be done, period. You would be absolutely just, one, asking for trouble from the cable. And the card is not designed to run at that power full time. It's shocking to me that the matrix even exists uh, at 800 watts, but it's getting it from two sources. It's never gonna pull more than 600 from here, which means it pulls 200 from down there. If you have them both plugged in, then I you could technically leave it at 600 watts. Like you could pull that power limit down and then you could just have it divide the power between the two plugs. But then what's the point in it? All right, there we go. You guys were like, what happens if you put the matrix BIOS on the Astral? Well, you saw what happens. It doesn't actually work. So with that said, leave your stuff stock BIOSes, unless you're, gonna, unless you're ready to assume the risk and just expect it to fail. I, I mean, I don't know how many people really want to go shelling out 50, 90 money constantly because of the fact that they want to tinker around, but there, the plenty of you exist. You guys are out there. All right, I'm gonna put this stuff all back to stock. Thanks for watching. That's what happens. Don't do it. And like I said, if you wanna dig your own grave, go ahead, but I'm not handing you the shovel.